Bobby Doyle. We would like to begin this event with a land acknowledgement while this event is virtual. <clears throat> Iowa State University and the College of Design are located on the ancestral lands and territory of the Bukoji or Iowa Nation. The United States took this land from the Meskwaki and Sauk Nations in the Treaty of 1842. The university wishes to recognize our obligations to this land and to all the people who have cared for it, including the 17,000 Native people who live in Iowa today. The College of Design Lecture Series is defined and coordinated by the College Lectures and Exhibitions Committee <clears throat> through nominations each year from the faculty and staff, faculty, staff, and student groups. Nominations for the 2022-23 academic year will open later this fall. We are thrilled to have Emily Doug Emory Douglas here today to share his life and work with us. Um, our college dean, Luis Rico Gutierrez, will introduce Emory today. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Olivia. Thank you very much, Shelby. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Emory, for accepting our invitation to speak today. Uh, I want to thank first the lectures committee for making this happen. And I do have to tell you it is an exceptional honor and privilege for me to, to introduce Emory, Emory today. Um, I'm pretty sure you know a lot about his life, but I have to say it. Um, I will begin by saying that in the 60s, um, he studied graphic design in the City College of San Francisco. San Francisco. Uh, actually, he designed theater sets, I understand, if I understand correctly, before joining the Black Part Panther Party in San Francisco. And he worked there, as many of you know, as the revolution artist and minister of culture uh, from 67 to um, the early um, 80s. Um, as part of his responsibilities, he directed the graphic production of the Black Panther, the organization's uh, newspaper. So uh, Mr. Douglas' work has been featured in every exhibition around the world that documents the role of art and design in the way we understand concepts like justice, revolution, change. For example, the Biennale in Sydney in 2008, uh, exhibitions at, um, at LACMA, the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco, um, the Richmond Art Center in uh, uh, Richmond, California, uh, exhibitions in Minneapolis, in um, uh, 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 the UK, in the uh, uh, Nottingham Con Contemporary Art Center, uh, the Centro de Arte Reina Sofia in Madrid. So every institution that is trying to document how art plays a role in all those concepts has actually featured the work of Emory, Emory Doug Douglas. Uh, there's been similar uh, number of publications that are uh, trying to achieve the same, uh, uh, same goals. So for example, you know, Black Panther, the revolutionary art of Emory Douglas uh, really provides a comprehensive overview of his work from the 60s to the 70s. Um, I should say also that in 2015, he received the American Institute of Graphic Art Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, 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 Award Medal. And, you know, I, I do have to say, you know, the list is really long, uh, but as I was writing those comments yesterday, I suddenly remember that it was the 21st night of September. And so may I, some of you may actually recognize the date from, uh, you know, the song of earth, wind and fire. And you know that that song begins asking the question, do you remember? And I think remember is a key word as we think about the work of Emory Douglas. All of these exhibitions, publications, awards are just the tip of the iceberg. Academic summaries of one's accomplishments, like the one that I just made, are just uh, the tip of that iceberg that sometimes tends to hide the true significance of, uh, 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 you know, uh, individuals like like uh, Emory. So I'm going to use that word remember, and I hope that you will remember that you were here on the 22nd noon of September of uh, 2021, because you realize that many of us don't remember a time when the struggle for equity, equality, justice was so central to every effort to define or redefine how we understand ourselves in our culture, but I hope you will remember that there was a before, and that, be, that before became what is now and will become our collective future, in part because of the work of Emory Douglas. So with that, I'm just going to pass it to Emory. Thank you for being here again. It's a privilege and an honor for all of us. Well, thank you, and I'm honored to be here today uh, to uh, do the, share my presentation with everyone. Uh, I'll make it brief in the context of, uh, so you know that uh, 
there's many uh, slides I have to show. So I won't most likely may not be able to get through them all, but uh, I will give you some, put some historical context behind the artwork itself. Uh, the artwork from the first part of the phase will be, will be about the art I did during the 60s and 70s. Then I go into discussing about the more recent art I've done since then and put it into some context. I, I will show a lot of the images. Some I will give historical context. Others I just will, you will be able to see them on the screen uh, because of time. So I started off with this one because this is uh, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, the founders of the Black Panther Party. And it started in October, 1966. I got involved in January of 1967, about three months after the inception. And it changed its name to the uh, Black Panther Party in 1968. So I, I just, and next, let it be next month is Black Panther Party History Month that we celebrate here in the Bay Area and wherever we have chapters and branches. Okay, well, now I have to go back because my thing is not clicking. So screens, I have to go back to share your screen. I don't know how that happened. Okay, maybe I'll go back to where I share my screen. Let's click it again. Okay, maybe I'll stop my share screen and start all over. <laughs> Can I go back to share screen again? Please go ahead, Emery. Um, I also want to mention that we will have a little bit of time for questions and answers at the end of Emery's presentation today. Okay, here we, here we go. Um, now this is, uh, I'll start off with this because this is, this is when I got involved, uh, I started work, doing production work on the paper. This was I'm the first tab. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we can't see your screen now. No, make sure to hit that green button at the bottom of your screen again. Can you hear me now? I see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this is um, the uh, right. The paper to the right is tabloid. First tabloid paper. First paper that I I begin to work on. This was the uh, uh, ninth, May 1st uh, paper that we went to Sacramento, California, and it talks about that. This is the clip art that Huey Newton asked me to put into the paper, and this is the one where I gave some thought to it uh, while I set it up on two pig on two hooks, keep the snort, put the badge on it, and that became the iconic pig drawing uh, uh, later on that you will see. This was the first one dealing with the murder of a young man named Denzel Dow who was a, a mentally challenged, 13 years old in Richmond, California. This is considered the first issue of the Black Panther newspaper, typed on a typewriter. Uh, Mark is done with the headlines. If I was was the one who laid this out at the time. Here again is the second issue. Again, we began to use the pig drawing again, uh, but I hadn't developed it as I have here on the right. And we were going to put the badge number of police who were harassing people in the community, intimidating, violating their basic human rights. And so that's why this, I want to show you this issue. Uh, then again, we used to use kind of a, a prefabricated uh, lettering that you buy in sheets and stuff that you could rub off to make the headlines. As you can see, uh, it has a very organic feel to it. Uh, some of it's kind of straight, some of it's not a little straight, those kinds of things. But then what is a pig? A no nature beast that has no regard for law, justice, or the right of people. A creature that bites the hand that feeds it. A foul, depraved traducer, usually found masquerading as the victim of an unprovoked attack. 1968, little Bobby Hutton, this you see in the back, was the very first member of the Black Panther Party. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale mentored him uh, when he was young. At 15 years old, they got permission, had to get permission from his mother, parents, for him to join the Black Panther Party. He was shot and murdered on April 6, 1968, uh, two days after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. He was shot over, over 17, 18 times by the Oakland police. It was then that we began to call for community control of police. We got it on the ballot in 
in conjunction with some progress, open-minded and progressive-minded folks in the Berkeley City Council and to vote on the Community Control Oversight Board of, of, of the police. However, it, uh, it lost by one vote, but it began to, all across the country, began to put in motion those who were beginning to demand for community control of police, which is an extension of what you hear today in relationship about abolition of the police departments and those things, what have you. Uh, to the right is uh, when Huey Newton had been shot in Oakland, California, and the police had got killed. And when the verdict came in and he was found uh, not guilty of, the, of murder, uh, police got drunk that evening and came by and shot up the office. They just sprayed it. Uh, uh, and here's to show you the actual office. And it's, he would say, we, we, we are fire only those who shoot up, up property and miss killing the niggas. And it says, yes, sir. And this is uh, the mentality uh, that I'm talking of, uh, expressing here in this here. Uh, at first, uh, they were going to uh, not fire them, but it was so much intense pressure until they had to. There's a there's a on the San Francisco State University archives. There's a documentary about ten minutes that you can see that talks about this whole history. Actual footage after when people in the community were out on the streets discussing this issue. In 1968, there were many many rebellions in the United States. Over two or three hundred, they say, have uh, been recorded uh, in the communities. Some on large scale, some on small scale. At the same time, you had the war in Vietnam going on, so it was nowhere to hide, nowhere to nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It was hell inside, hell outside. Uh, I use this one here, America spelled with three Ks. It wasn't uh, a, my uh, creative ability to, uh, uh, in relationship to frame it like that and create it with three Ks, but I thought it was relevant to the art, so I in, included it in this graphic I did. It's all the same, the local police, the National Guards, the Marines. Uh, uh, today, all that comes under Homeland Security. It's all, this, it becomes under one institution. Here you have the, uh, 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 we tend to use a little rat as a little imperialist capitalist, winding up his toys, they're sending them off to war. They realize they fight a long war, world war, and they come back, and many of them join the Black Panther Party. We had a lot of ex Vietnam vets who came and joined the Black Panther Party. But these are different phases of the Black Panther Party. You had the Black Panther Party for self-defense, which the name was changed to the Black Panther Party later on. But in the context of this, this was the self-defense aspect of a totally community within the context of the law, and then began to deal with images that dealt with social programs, also dealing with images with solidarity of people's struggles around the world. So the art evolved as the party evolved. Here's the one to the left, Sam, here Richard Nixon, who was the president at the time. Henry Kissinger was the, uh, the Secretary of State. Ha, 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 good old American peace, and got a missile going through the globe. It says third world, Latin America, Asia, Africa. To the right, get out of, Af get out of the ghetto, get out of Africa, get out of Asia, get out of Latin America, US imperialists. Here's one, our fight is not in Vietnam. Uh, this, uh, I'll free the GIs. Uh, our fight was not in Vietnam. Vietnam. Vietnamese wasn't lynching us. The Vietnamese wasn't murdering us. The Vietnamese wasn't causing un inferior education. The Vietnamese wasn't causing indecent housing. The Vietnamese were, I want, abused us and called us out our name. So our fight was not in Vietnam. Our fight was right here in this country. And here again, seeing the rat as a little avaricious business, purse greedy person, got all the stacks of gold and everything eats up, it poops out on war machines and missiles and what have you. The one to the right says, pigs want war, Panthers cool. Elder Cleaver, early on in 1967, late now around, some period in 1967, was invited by the Student uh, Association as at uh, University of California to speak. But uh, Ronald Reagan put pressure on the Board of Regents at the UC Berkeley for, to not allow Elders Cleveland to speak. Again, so again, dealing with a free speech issue. 
And so we, that's why we talk about the pigs want war, Panthers cool. And Ronald Reagan attacks Elders Cleveland. And it's, it, you know, just make him as a, a pig on this issue. Speaking as the racist governor of California, I don't think Elgin Cleaver should teach at UC. To the right is one where you got the US nursing all these little piglets and the names of all on here, uh, all these have been directly or indirectly involved in the colonization of other uh, third world countries in the world. The psychological impacts of war then and now. Uh, you, matter of fact, they still don't talk about it as much, but you got you got veterans of the war who commit suicide every day right now in this country. U.S. government approved. You have those who want to uh, refuse to go. They said peace with honor. They just refuse to go. Some went underground, some left the country, some went to prison, but they just refused to go. Here's about, this is Cornell University during the 60s, when, the, when there was the black conscious area, defined by trying to develop uh, uh, black studies departments. And there was a great resistance about, around that. And Cornell University was one of the first students union who were demanding at Yale, at, at Cornell, I believe, excuse me. And what happened is that uh, their lives began to threaten and they were getting messages about attacks on them. So that's when they brought in to protect themselves for self-defense. Uh, but, but that wasn't the reality of what it was meant to be, but it was meant to be in relationship to, to protect themselves. So when the negotiations uh, were worked out, that's where you see them coming out with the guy. But there, I think there's a, a film called Agents of Change that just goes into San Francisco State, which was the first uh, or second BSU form in this country, black student uniform in this country, and the other part dealing with Cornell, called Agents of Change. And that's why I did this image here uh, to, uh, uh, to acknowledge this particular event. We called uh, Babylon, the elders began, we calling the word Babylon to define America. And then 1968 again, as the pig standing in the middle of the Pentagon ready for overkill with a rope, lynch rope in one hand, M16 military rifle under the, under the arm. Got a blood sucking vulture and dollar bills coming out the mouth. Hand, hand grenade in the other hand. In New Haven, Connecticut, you had two Panthers, Bobby Seal and Erica Huckins, who were set out by Asian provocateurs for the murder of a Panther, which they were eventually exonerated of. Kent, Ohio, you had four white students who were murdered by the National Guard for protesting against the war in Vietnam. You had Augusta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, and many other campuses where you had black students on the campus that were out, there were battles on those campuses, uh, outright battles on those campuses with the, with the uh, uh, police, what have you. You had Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and the struggle of the Palestine. Also, you had 1968, you had John Carlos and Tommy Smith, who, uh, had discussions with community people and Panthers were part of that, all kinds of folks, but I was not one, where they were discussing uh, what they could do when they went to the Olympics in regards to the human rights violations against the, the black community. Uh, they couldn't come to a consensus with the other Olympians, many, some of them. So when they went there, this, they gave the power sign. 1960, uh, 1960, uh, 1970, uh, I think it's 70, it was 68, 70, 1972 Olympics, I believe, uh, four years later. You had the uh, Wayne Collette, excuse me, it's 1972, I believe, yeah. You had Wayne Collette, Vince Matthew and Wayne Collette ignore tradition at the Munich Olympics. When they won the Olympics, the, 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 uh, the protests and demonstrations were carried over from the 1968 Olympics where they said, that's why we titled this at ease because they're standing on the podium after they won the, uh, their, their uh, performance and they're at ease, just hands on the hips, on the chin. And that was acknowledging, and this is, a, this is the spirit that their Kaepernick comes out of who played for the 49ers. 
It was said East, here it was on the back of the paper, this image showing the same thing in defiance demonstration. The Olympics, here they got on the, got on the ground, they run the race, they come to the uh, winning line and it says USA, they stand up on the podium with the flag and when it's over, a nigger is a nigger is a nigger. This is in the context of the, the mentality of the, uh, the police, the institutional structural racism that exists within these institutions and the police departments or what have you. Here is this two is when Bastia, a Latino brothers who were charged with the killing of a San Francisco policeman, they had no help. As they came to us, asked us to help them out. We share half of our paper, four or five papers with them to tell a story about that case. We have, we got them a lawyer, our lawyer, Charles Garrett, to work with them. Eventually, we found that guilty. Um, and if just in case, if just for example, if they didn't have any kind of help, they may still be in prison or went to, sent to the gas chamber. This was happening in San Francisco in the, in the Mission District. They will happen to be carrying some stuff of, into the house that was theirs. Police stopped them, tried to claim, wanted to think, assuming that they were thieves, thefts, or stealing stuff, call them all, oh, disrespect them, and all those kinds of things. And then when they got on the kind of shoving mats, the other police pulled out the gun and shot the other police. And he tried to blame and say that they did it. This is boycott lettuce. This is when Cesar Chavez and United Farm Workers were going to Sacramento. They marched past our office in Oakland. And there were about 50 of them. And we heard the noise and went out. And there was Cesar Chavez with the farm workers. And we asked them what, what, what and, I, and they explained they were going to Sacramento because of the, uh, the protests against the, uh, the pesticides that were being uh, sprayed on the, on the field on the lettuce that were harming the farm workers. And they needed, were hungry, needed a place to eat. So we invited them to our school, which is about 20 or 30 blocks away from our headquarters at that time, and had lunch with them. And they after the show our solidarity as they continued on to Sacramento, uh, we did this paper say boycott lettuce. And we had done many things with Cesar Chazaz and the farmers before. We helped them get uh, unionized through the Safeways. We were on the lines with them in 1967, protesting against Safeways stores back then when they were trying to get unionized and access them in the, to the market there. This is kind of play off when you go up and uh, you have the, uh, going up into these uh, space programs and their history back then they're saying, oh, at last, when they got up on Mars, what have you, white only. When it was white night, because based on the uh, white flight of uh, communities of color and black people where they lived that during that time when black people move in, they move out. So it's based on that. And I carried it over to Trump. I have some stuff coming up on Biden pretty soon. I'm working on it. And it's the same thing, white only. Here's again, whatever's good for the oppressor has got to be bad for us. He says, hey, handle them slaves with care. We're going to need them for Mars, Pluto, and all those other planets. Here you have the slaves getting off the flayed pig ship and say, I knew we should have shot this shit before it got off the ground. Here you got the pig over here holding the pick and the shovel saying, okay, goddammit, don't take 400 years this time. This is in reference to the slave labor demanding reparations for the building of this country over 400 years. This is today's news, save the children. This is anywhere in the world right now, in this country. You go down to where the hurricane hit and other places where disasters have taken place, where nothing has really been done sufficiently enough to help those folks, you will see all this. We want decent housing fit for the shelter human beings. That's what this one's about. That's the same as this one, showing the conditions Here again, dealing with the issue of this decent house. It says, it, it is my belief we black people need gas and electricity on cold and dark days, doctors and nurses in times of sickness, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in times of hunger. 
justice to your right. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight although we have to die. We have to hold up the blood stained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. My mother was a soldier. She had in her hand the freedom plow. And when she got old and couldn't fight anymore, she said, I'm gonna get up and fight anyhow. My father was a soldier. He had in his hand the freedom plow. And when he got old and couldn't fight anymore, he said, we gotta get up and fight anyhow. Now with all the soldiers we have in our hand, the freedom plow. When we get old and can't fight anymore, we got to get up and fight anyhow. I just want to testify. I'm not going to sit around any longer. I got freedom on my mind. That's to your left. To your right, we shall survive without a doubt. This is the image I did when we were rescuing people to vote back in the day. Of course, you know, uh, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You got to do something. Register to vote. To your right, vote for survival free food program. When we say talking about vote for survival, we were talking about the quality of life issue uh, uh, that are now become a part of the language of you hear politicians speaking to in many ways today. A vote for Chisholm is a vote for survival. A lot of people try to say that Clinton was the first woman to run for president in this time and day and age, Shirley Chisholm. We support, supported Shirley Chisholm. She came to California to, in the Bay Area and we held rallies for so Shirley Chisholm. Uh, we thought she was the best candidate at that time. So we supported her. Here's all power to the people to the right, little baby, and all those different survival programs, free lunch, breakfast program, free health clinics, free food giveaways, all that and all power to the people. That's what it represents. Black genocide, sickle cell anemia. It was a disease that predominantly impacted the African-American community in this country. There was nothing brand brought, no attention was being brought to that issue. And so we took it up and we did over with our the doctors and nurses and volunteers. We did over 100,000 free sickle cell anemia testing in the community, just to prick another finger with and get tested in the blood and find out if they had the sickle cell or not. And a lot of people were able to find out why they were feeling ill and what happened for those who had the sickle cell. Then they could get some kind of, uh, there's still no cure, but they could get some kind of treatment for it. Germ warfare declared against blacks. Of course, that looks like the context of many people not wanting to get the vaccine for that reason, maybe other, and others, but uh, the syphilis uh, ex experiment in, in, 19, uh, in, in 1939 started, they had a, uh, had a cure in 19, in, in 19, I think 45, 47, it was penicillin, but they never gave it to the sharecroppers. They were, these were sharecroppers, couldn't read or write, they offered $50 a piece to be in this uh, experiment. It went on until 1972. 1972, you had the, uh, some progressives in the mainstream press who couldn't get it at, pre published, so they brought it to us and to other uh, alternative press, and we all began to put it in our paper, and that's when the study came, was exposed to the point that they had to stop the study and say, acknowledge that it existed. Here's one where we had uh, where people could go, come get free clothes, free brushes, whatever they need, cleaning supplies, those things. To the right, here's, we had a safe, seniors against a fearful environment. We used to pick them up from the satellite houses, taking the picture checks, uh, take them to go shopping, all of these things. But this helicopter was about the issue then of Oakland wanting to spend, I believe it was about $54,000 on a helicopter to patrol crime in the community. When we say if you really want to call, uh, deal with crime, you, you take that $54,000 and you invest it in young people to take the senior shopping, to take in the cash day checks, to do those kinds of things if you really want to invest in crime prevention. Hypertension kills. I'm hungry, I'm unemployed, I'm black. Today's news to the right. When Ronald Reagan was doing all the cutbacks and there was a lot of frustrations, this is down with exploitation, give me all my money now. To the right, people's free health clinics. Eric, this is also a button, as I mentioned earlier, about Bobby and Eric Huggins when they were incarcerated in New Haven, Connecticut. 
These are images of mine that are reproduced by the Cuban artists back who did amazing posters in solidarity with people from Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And they used to, uh, that's, and they took several of my images and made it into this poster done by OSPA, Organization of Solidarity with People from Asia, Africa, and Latin America. These were the two images that were remixed. A lot of people thought I was copying their art when they seen this poster, but this is where the art comes from, these original images that I did here. The same with this one, Solidarity with the African-American People, August 18, 1968, in four different languages. Here's an art image. With, this was in a, in a small, about this side, in the, new, in the interior of the newspaper. So, and they remix and re, 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 turned it over, and re, made it to this amazing poster. Afro-American solidarity with the oppressed people of the world. 19, this is 1968, 9, This shows the two images of Fred Hampton, uh, uh, Jet, Judas and the Messiah, whose image the film was about recently. Uh, this, and Mark Clark was the other Panther, which I did redid this with the show Honor Him and respect him as well as a martyr of the Black Panther Party. Here again is this one showing, uh, oops, excuse me. This one show Halloween <laughs> and trick or treat pig, trick or treat. This is Richard Nixon and Spiral Agnew. The prep, he was the vice president. Richard Nixon was the president. Both were expelled, had to leave office in disgrace. Richard Nixon was gonna be in peace. So he left office in disgrace. The president and the vice president of the United States, criminals, just like criminals, running the government. Here's a replay of the, we want an end to the robbery by the capitalists of our black community. This is around Christmas. This is a remix of one with the, uh, with the, uh, with the shield on the face, the mask on. But we were, we were not concerned, we were not, uh, we weren't uh, against the holiday of Christmas. We were against the exploitation of the holiday, how it makes poor people go out and buy and, and suffer, spending money that they don't have to make their families happy and going in debt for the next 10, 15 years. Here's one. I wonder if Nixon is bugging us now. And I said, I wonder if, if Trump is spying on us now. That went from Obama to Trump, and now to be Biden, because they used to say that they weren't. When Rousseff, vice the president then, the lady who was the president of Brazil, came to the United States in a press conference, Obama said, "No, we don't spy. We don't spy on anybody at all, and what have you. We don't do that." A few days later, they came out that they had been spying on for me over ten years or more. I Gerald Ford and the 35th puppet of the United States. Corporations, we've seen all this when, when you had Wall Street collapse and all the other things go down. And when we see these wars going on, this is about money. These wars are about making money. That's why they're so upset about getting out of Afghanistan. This is why they turned it back on some of their allies and, getting up and, and, and working with some of their allies because they want to sell them this, this military. It's, equipment that they have. Nixon wanted to be king, Nixon, corporate profit spending, all that going up. Trump wanted to be the same, king, king Nixon, king Trump. Class brothers. Conspiracy to destroy the Black Panther Party, Cointelpo. They spent over $20 million more to destroy and discredit the Black Panther Party. Cautious surviving in a, in criminal, is criminal. And then are two black men's lives dramatized by why? Prison camps, USA, the unknown slave. Today, you call it a prison industrial complex. Privatization of prison. It's about profit. And you have to have a product to have profit, to make a, to make a profit. If you don't have enough product on your shelf, you don't make no profit. So there are always going to be those, some who are going to be incarcerated because it's about Money. Now, if what it happened, I don't know. It has stopped working. Maybe I have to go again. Oh, here you go. Okay. Now, 
my suffering, my bitterness, my loneliness. I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm not going to let it turn me around. Young family, they have family members that's incarcerated. Here, why must black people look at each other through prison bars? Where is our freedom? The family and loved ones may be in minimum security, while those who are incarcerated are in maximum security. Political Prisoners USA, Free of the New York 21, these are Panthers who were incarcerated initially uh, back in the day, and, and, and all charges were eventually just thrown out. So it was a way of kind of disrupting the organization and, it's just, and what it was trying to do. So what's happening again now? It's clicking again, then, okay, I'll go like this. The Black Panther free Angela, Angela Davis, when she was uh, uh, on, uh, uh, incarcerated, the kind of her relationship with George Jackson and what have you during that time. And we supported her. We all the very, very beginning of the Black Panther Party. Uh, we always had a close relationship with Angela Davis. Uh, George Jackson was a Panther who, brother who was in San Quentin prison who uh, put the word out that he wanted to start the uh, prison chapter of the Black Panther Party. And uh, that became our first chapter inside prison, which is San Quentin prison. Uh, you know, Jack, the legend of George Jackson, you can. You can Research it more on YouTube if you're not familiar with who he is, as well as Angela Davis. Kidnapped. This is when Bobby Seale went to went to uh, Chicago. He spoke at the Democratic Convention at the demonstrations that took place in 1968 outside of the, the uh, convention, uh, where there was a massacre and a bloodbath on those who were out there protesting and demonstrating. He left, came back to the state. I mean, to California. And he was arrested uh, afterwards, sent back and said that to Chicago to stand trial because they said he incited to riot, which was not the case because he wasn't even there. But they used it. I tried to use it against him. Eventually he was found not guilty. But in the courtroom in Chicago, during the press hearings, and the lawyer got had a minor health operation that he had to deal with. And Bobby Seale wanted to defend himself. And they wouldn't allow him. We took this judge who, out of retirement, who's an extremist, uh, to be the judge. And Bobby wanted to defend himself, and they would allow him. So each time they would mention him in the, in the course of the, uh, the hearings, proceedings, and he would stand up and object and want to talk. And they gagged him, and they kicked him down in the chair. Never in the history that this happened before, and took him out to courtroom. This is the first time in history that it happened to one other time, there was two, three Panthers in on the Angola Three, which you can read a hit, a reference them on uh, YouTube as well. Here was when Bob A. Seale and Erica Huggins both were in New Haven, Connecticut. They're really trying to cut off the head of the Panthers by setting them up with the agent provocateurs who murdered the Panthers, and they tried to blame it on Erica Huggins and Bobby Seale. And it says, hallelujah, the might and the power of the people is beginning to show. This was when they were found not guilty and released from prison. This shows our solidarity with the original caretakers of this land, the, the American Indian. We always aim was our, was our comrades and arm in the struggle and what have you. They always acknowledged that they were inspired by the Black Panther Party as well. This is a more recent image. I'm going to newer images now. These are, these are uh, rich, colorful images that I've done recently. And this is a more re remix of the Panther image itself. This is called Malcolm X, the warrior. This is Malcolm X, the, I call the father figure. This is Dr. King, who, when he began to oppose the war in Vietnam, that's when he got murdered. All, and when he began to talk about uh, solidarity and uh, outs and issues that were dealing with internationally and what have you, uh, that's when the many of those civil, main so-called civil rights leaders abandoned him. We used to work the same fields that the sharecroppers do today uh, and what have you. So this is basically that expression. But going to them, I'm not based on the time, I don't uh, go into them and talk about it too much. 
this, this is the take off of these, they used to buy the paper. And so I want to highlight them, honor them, I did. And I remixed them again with the, with the papers in relationship to what the news would be about today. It's called Today's News on There, SOS Global Warming, uh, Justice Resist Unjust Laws, All Power Truth. We were talking about housing, jobs, all these things, you know. That's the essence of trying to bring it, making it relevant in the context of the, uh, the news today. And it says here, respect Mother Earth. Don't support the greedy to the right. Here we, here we are living in the land of plenty while we, the people, starve. People's free food program. This is all this, this is a remix of a, a historical one. Freedom, our pamphlet school. We had a, we had our alternative schools. You can see that on YouTube, Oakland Community uh, Learning Center, Oakland Community School. And we had liberation schools as well. Uh, up to the right, educate to liberate. We got freedom sim symbol icon pamphlet. People, this is one that says survival pending revolution. She says, I am a revolutionary. She got the people's free health clinics. Free breakfast for children served here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. People's free food programs, free clothing programs. We had liberation schools, and they had the, the, our schools as well. We had a free bus into prison programs where in, where in Chicago they had been given a bus the size like a almost like a Greyhound bus that they put the pan free busing prison program on and the Black Panther and the symbol, and they put a word out that, and let people know that whatever prison they would be going to that week, if they meet at a certain location, they get a free ride there and back to visit those who are incarcerated, their loved ones, their family members, their friends who were incarcerated. This happened not just in Chicago, but it's happened all over, all over the country. And we had cars, vans as well, as people uh, donated their time as well to do the driving. Which Salem, we had a free ambulance service because the ambulance wasn't coming into the community. And that's the first chapter in the South, which was from Salem, North Carolina. And that's because the uh, ambulance wasn't coming into the community in a, uh, in, in, in a, in a, in a, in on, on time and what have you. So the Panthers wouldn't got certified as ambulance drivers. And the community bought them, helped them buy the ambulance. So we had the Black Panther Party. Community Ambulance Service in Winston Salem. This one says Turtle Island, North America, Indigenous Territory. Health is wealth. I like to sing, yes, yeah, non toxic. This button says, I'm food insecure. This one says, I'm homeless. Here's the says the Black Panther Party, October 1966, 1982. And the Hells of Panther are serving the community, body and soul. We want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. So this deals with all of, when I talked about the busing, free busing to prison program, the ambulance, you see that in the last image, doctors serving and volunteer with us out in the community. There's a whole lot of actual photographs that document all of these things that I'm discussing. Here's two I did. This is one I did it with an honor in Kaepernick, number seven. First M of it and in, in the front. And I had one had I had Serena on another one, uh, Williams, because how they treated her at Wilmington when they talked about her how her beauty, uh, you know, in a nasty, bad way, in a racist, bigoted way. So it had, it, but then I did it again, saying I am we on the button again. Here's another one, remixed it again and repurposed again. It said little people against colonialism. I am we, got the kite in the back with the panther on the symbol on it. Mother's love, father's love. Here's one for reparations with Japanese reparations and African-American reparations exhibition that I was invited to contribute, to be a part of. And this is one of the images that I uh, included in that exhibition that I did for that uh, about 10, almost five, 10 years ago. Here's talking about freedom. And also here's other image of reparations that I did also. That's in there. This image is being remixed now on a big wall, 16 inches, I think by 12 inches. 
uh, at the Museum of Modern Art here in San Francisco, which will be opening soon, I, I assume. Uh, this is Trump, wherever way he turned, he was lying, no matter, any way he talked, he was, it was just lies. Fashion, xenophobe. Ice cold wickedness. Mama, mom, mommy, mama, papa, poppy, when the immigrant was coming from locking up, separating families, putting them in prison and cages. Made in America. Ice cold wickedness. Trump, the shithole president. Remember when he called all the black and third world countries shithole countries? Well, he was the shithole president. Here again is relationship to Haiti, which you have happening today. And there's going to be major protests coming up soon around that issue of how they're being treated, being whooped like they are, like they slept the animals. And, beaten down by the police. This is an Afro-American solidarity with the Asian community. This was in context of the, the abuse and the uh, ignorance that Trump created by talking about the Asian in relationship to the negative aspect of, 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 of how treating them in the media. Arab Muslim Islam, US government coded word for terrorist hate discrimination. Black male, US government coded word for hate, discriminate, kill. Justice resists unjust laws. Amendment one to the Constitution of, of the United States of America, freedom of religion, speech, and the press, rights of assembly and petition. BDS, boycott, divest, sanction, down with apartheid. Here's again that same image showing a solidarity uh, with that with the, my solidarity with boycott, divest, movement, down with apartheid. Free the land by any means necessary, boycott, divest, down with apartheid. And when when South Africa says it's worse apartheid existing in Israel than in South Africa, then you have to look at that in that context. Peace heals, war kills. Here's what we figures using word figures to make up the word war. When this image like this, going like this is war, if it was going in the same direction, it would mean peace. And this is a, a playoff, an abstract of a Bantu African symbol that represents this, like this makes war. If it was both one and the it would make peace. And war, as the figures, W-A-R, the dynamic of what war, impact of war, those millions and thousands of people with limbs, still got landmines all over the world. They not they had been trained rats and stuff in certain parts of Africa to send out to test the landmines that still exist today. Africa and in and, and, and Asia and different parts of the world. Crimes against humanity. This is Yemen. What's going on in Yemen? The United States had denied that they were involved in it and the British were their cohorts. But eventually so much came out and was exposed that they had to acknowledge that they were giving weapons of, of destruction to the, to the Saudis made in America. And I call it genocide. Millions of food insecurity, millions of displaced, thousands injured, humanitarian import, blockades, thousands dead, water shortage. These are images. This is for Spike Lee, The Five Bloods. I was asked to do this, and there's a documentary short video that we did together when it came to my house. Uh, and it was based on that image I showed you. Our fight is not in Vietnam. He liked that image. And he, he said I reflected it. So this was one of the posters that they used, but also this was a Pope, one of his personal, personal posters that he has uh, for his collection as well. And this is uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. I also was asked to do this one as also as another uh, poster that was used for PR 
not the main uh, billboard posters, but part of their online PR. Uh, and they want you to reflect the one idea of Fred Hampton, but with the actor, uh, Kaluga, who won the Academy Award, uh, at Best Actor Academy Award for that film. Peace, respect Mother Earth. Respect Mother Earth. Global warming. SOS, global warming. Go he left, go for right. Mother Earth, all these frigid changes is going through. And they talk about the doomsday clock. Well, we're getting closer and closer to that hour. It was two or three minutes away, we're getting closer and closer. If we don't make the changes that need to be begin to hopefully, this, you got glaciers is melting. You got all kinds of stuff just coming uh, in, into that manifesting that didn't exist. This is with Haiti. I did this when they had the uh, cholera epidemic in Haiti because of the UN soldiers feasting in the water. Over 10,000 Haitians died and, hundred, and five, hundreds of thousands got sick. And the UN never wanted to acknowledge it's, uh, it's, it, it was the cause of it. The UN soldiers they eventually did, but it took them so long to do it because of all the pressure. Black Lives Matter, Justice Now, Black Lives Matter. As much as things change, some things stay the same. Why do they get to brutalize and murder us and we get to blame? Police Terror, USA. And I tried to do all the uh, different sexes in the symbols. This was the first one I did, but it, when I did it first, I had the bark, it was by Oscar Grant young brother in Oakland who was murdered on the bar station when the police kneeled down over him and shot him point blank in the back. The black code, a black person has no rights, which an institutional racist judicial system is bound to respect. It gives the appearance of being fair and just when the biased decisions have already been decided. This is in Australia, when a collaboration with Aboriginal artist Richard Bell Peter Norman was from Australia. He was in solidarity with Pop John Carlos and Tommy Smith at the 1968 Olympics. He wore the badge for Olympians for human rights. And so he was in solidarity with them. And they, be, and they also were pallbearers at his funeral in Australia. He had never got the, he was the fastest runner for the next Olympics in the, in, 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 but they blacklisted him. And he was never allowed to run again because he, Supported John Carlos and Thomas Smith at the 1968 Olympics. So they wanted to, uh, the uh, artists, to, the folks there wanted to have young people be able to become aware of that issue in Australia. The T. Teller Loco massacre, October 2nd, 1968, just before the Olympics, they had this major massacre in Mexico where the demonstration, the protest with activists, students, and activists, and others were protesting against the, the government itself and what have you. And he lured them to a local location called the Telama Teloco Massacre, excuse my language, messing up the word. But they went there and they thought they were going to talk and to make work out the differences. And they had this big big building across from it. They say they seen people, some folks were there say they seen people were strapped around them. They didn't know what was going on at first. But then all of a sudden, when all the folks got there, they started opening up on them. They slaughtered. They tried to claim it was only 60, but some people say it was hundreds, three or four hundred or more uh, that, that, got, that were slaughtered. And I did this because the U.S. Pentagon issued. The Pentagon sent radio, weapons, ammunition, and radio control train material to Mexico before and during the massacre. This is me in Chiapas, and Chiapas, thinking to do some work, collaboration with the Zapatistas. I'm in here with this young man here, Caleb Duarte, who's coordinating the uh, the trip at a Delo Art Center, and I and he was introducing me to some of the Zapatistas who were on this building. We were coming back uh, a year later with a group of about 13 to 18 of us, and to paint this building. And this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like then. This is when we came back the next year in the collaboration, all of us, the installation, and people see it now when they travel up and down. 
And it was about, they wanted it to be about solidarity, education, health, all those issues to be reflected in the artwork uh, on, the, uh, on the building itself. And that's what all these re re reflect in the rays. Then, well, this is my uh, contrib here, here, my contribution here, right here, which are these to be solidarity, education, production, cultural. The people of the corn, these are installations that are Chap Zapatistas, which you, which you see up here. Hey, Emery, it's Shelby. Um, we, you asked for a five minute warning, so I'm okay, popping well, in. I'll, I'll and okay. we, uh, we have some folks who'd love to ask you some questions, so take okay. your time. And these are, Zap these are Zapatista, uh, 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 these are blankets done with my work, 20 by 30 uh, uh, inches by the Zapatista Mayan Women Collectors in Chiapas. This is when I visited the school in uh, Oakland, California. This is, this is in uh, Urbis in Manchester, England, when I had an exhibit there. This is the exhibition where you had desks and they had a video they could, and all these things they could reference. They had desks with books connected that we were reading material of the Black Panther Party that were required reading. It had over 43,000 people. It visited the exhibit for over nine months. This is opening night. This is Urbis. This is in the. Uh, this is in Australia, out Elon International School of Fine Arts on the street. When I was invited there, forty-one days to do an artist in residency. Been back four or five times. This is at the library with Maori and activists about a land problem they had issue with the government trying to take over their land. And they're planning some protests at the library. They asked me in relationship to contribute to the illustrations or suggestions of ideas. This is all uh, Maori school. Uh, these are Samoan school in, in New Zealand that I visited, I visited. Artists, all artists. This is a, uh, that co I combined these two images, a twist symbol, a Maori symbol called, uh, you, we may go different ways, but we always come back together. I liked it. And I combined it with this to make up a, 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 my artwork that I did in collaboration with Wayne Ewell, um, uh, who was Maori, and Rigo 23, who was from the states? We were all there together, and this is where I came. Our oppression is over is our path to unity. And that's what it briefly means in Maori, as we spell it. This is in uh, this is in uh, this is in Argentina. Try marching. Young people invited me there. Had a, had a big basketball national basketball stadium. About five six thousand young people. This is after the. Uh, Presentation. This is in uh, uh, this is in Lisbon, Port Portugal. Each, each step you go up, you see art images. So you get up four levels. This is this is in, in Nottingham, contemporary here. When I was there to, to do a, a, a talk in conjunction about art, in conjunction with the symposium around Jean Genet, who also supported us uh, during the 1960s. This is Bogota, Colombia. This is showing you the announcement of the exhibition. This is on the streets as you go up and down. You see the, these, uh, these displays of the work going up and down. This is in uh, Brazil. Sessi Place is huge. It's one of them city blocks, square blocks in New York. Inside, they had did the elevators with the art, 10 or 15 elevators. You see the art on the art. This is getting preparations for the installation and on the inside the exhibition. This is opening opening nights. This is in Oakland. This is a huge mural. Uh, an artist in solidarity with Palestine. He had the Jewish American artists who did the Palestinian sister who could not come get her work. He had uh, Afrocentric artists. You had Japanese American artists. You had uh, uh, indigenous artists. You had artists from Jordan. You had uh, also, it was a whole com mixture, combination, Arab American. This was my contribution to that mural. So I'm taking a picture with the young Palestinian kid. This is Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, and they like this image. This is Sister Charlotte, who was a former pastor, who was doing a lot of work, community work there. Highly respected and love her and her husband. 
and this is what they want to use this in conjunction with the other things they want to put on that wall when I was there. This is and this is also in New Zealand and when I collaborated and they liked this the image that I did. Uh, they liked it want it to be by peace. But this is when they meet they honey. It's called honey, I know. But they want to have gangs there, but they want it to be about peace. So that's why we the mochas, they call don't call them, they call them mochas. In the face, it was married of, of the words peace. That's when Tommy Ichi, who was a well-known activist there, met me. He and others, and along with the Polynesian Panthers, a lot of people know there were Polynesian Panthers in Australia. And we took me straight to their marae and uh, gave me official welcome in their, in their, in their language. Endanger, I'm about finished. Endangered species, youngsters killing each other, don't realize they're endangered species, less than 1%. Talking bullets, looking bullets, pointing bullets, mental bondage, prison industrial complex, about money, private property. Don't realize when they're going in the system, it's about profit, about money. Hallelujah, justice. Lily Peltier, right? Native indigenous, AIM American Indian, our comrade. Amiya Aju, Amiya Abu Jabal, represent many political prisoners who are still incarcerated. Free, free political prisoners, by three more images, free political prisoners, freedom fighters USA, fight for fighters for, jet, for peace, justice, freedom particularly the struggles against recognized cruel and oppressive conditions, government's inhumane policies and actions. This is at the Lorraine, this is at the Lorraine Hansberry uh, 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 Museum in Memphis, Tennessee. The place where Dr. King was assassinated is now made into a museum, has been made into a museum. And they want to include the activist art from the 60s to be a part of that. And they want to use this image as to be inclusive. And last, the remix of the paper boy, not the paper girl. It's all power to the people. And that's it. Thank you much. Emory, thank you so much for this talk. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to. Um, and I don't know if you want to keep your screen up or not. That's uh... yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, we have a number of questions already in the chat. Um, uh, before we go to the questions, is if you guys are able to turn on your cameras um, and clap, I think that would be fantastic. Um, or at least give a an emoji, uh, an emoji clap to say thank you to Emery for that wonderful lecture. Got a silent applause. There's a everyone's muted, but I hope you can see that in memory. Um, and so I will also. We can take questions both through the chat, and there are a number there already. So, I, Emory, I may just start reading you a couple of the questions if that works for you. Um, yes, I'm going to do it. I'll go, look, go go with the flow. How you want it to work? Um, and then, if anybody would like to also turn on their camera and microphone, maybe just give us a virtual hand raise. Um, for that, and we'll we'll spend a couple minutes or more than a couple minutes on questions. Um, I know a lot of people have classes that start at one ten, so hopefully we've got a bit of grace on that also. But the first question that came through um, was, how can we avoid cultural appropriation while making graphic art that draws from the struggles of what of one community to depict the pain and challenges of another community to make our argument stronger? Well, to, today is, is a challenge. So you do have. To, I would suggest as you as you as your work comes popularized and and is being appropriated, then you're gonna to have to have to go through some connection with some art connected legal legal help assistance because that's what I, I deal with in that context. You know, for for those for those kind of things. Uh, that's the only way I can tell you. And you got to you got to let it be known that. That you, if you don't want that, you have to definitely let it be known, you know. But I know it becomes a challenge as artists because that's the part of the business aspect. 
in the context of dealing with the real world. You know, it, it, you're still dealing with the reality of the real world. So you still have to have some kind of some kind of representation to in your relationship to protecting your work. You know, when you when you feel it's not when things are being done that you prefer not to be done with your work. So you have to seek out. There are there are institutions, there are individuals out there who represent artists. And those, and those, of course, at the same time, uh, you got to find them who are not going to overburden you with a lot of overhead and charges and cost. So that comes a thing too. And so these are kind of things that maybe artists should begin to discuss collectively and connect with others who are going into some kind of a law and those things or find out what services are available that people can be referenced to to get that kind of support when they need. Thanks, um, Olivia. I don't know if you see the chat, but a couple of people would like to who wrote questions would like to ask them verbally. It looks like Cruz sure. and Justin. Yeah, maybe uh, Justin. Do you want to ask your question? You had a, you had a couple up there, and then Cruz. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, so first off, thank you so much for the talk. That was really, really helpful to hear from someone who actually lived through all of these things instead of just seeing it on a screen or in a documentary or something. Um, <clears throat> so as someone who fought through the civil rights movement in the 60s and 70s, how do you see our struggles with institutional racism and how do you see the Black Lives Matter movement today in comparison? How are they similar? How are they different? Well, one, ours was a uh, political organization, uh, you know, and we, we and uh, Black Lives Matter is a movement and has all the many different organizations that are connected with it now. But we we had we had our own ideological perspective. I'm quite sure I, I, Black Lives Matter does as well. But they're going through a whole it's a whole other dynamics coming out of what exists today. Well, it's just today that there's 50 years of difference in that context, you know, uh, and then, then, then 50 years ago, you know, we didn't, you don't have babies coming out the computer understanding computers and all that 50 years ago, you see what I'm saying? You didn't have the hip hop community who was inspired by other hip hop artists and bling bling and all those things, all those dynamics that you're dealing with is dealing with today, you know, it's a whole other dynamics. So I think the Black Lives Matter has been inspired, been inspired with, because they've been inspired by. We've had a lot of meetings with them, different panthers and what have you. They have invited me, who those who are in working in the, some of the institutions uh, have invited me to come and do talks in UCLA, in, in, in Minnesota, in different places to many uh, you know, students and what have you. So in that context, yeah, because I think there's, there's black activists part of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, and there's another aspect of it as well. You know. Thank you. I think I can, I can ask mine. First, uh, thanks so much, right? Like it's like a dream for me to watch your work, you presenting, talking about it in a way, uh, and and I have like it's a slide like. To, to question one, the first one is how important or how, how aware you were as a designer with all the, I, I mean, I can see it in the work, but I'm also interested in, in the sense of graphic and style of all the struggles of emancipation that were happening around the world, right? And the use of, of really powerful images and, and, uh, and uh, paraphernalia like newspapers and so on. Like how, how was that present in the work if it was in a way? And also the other question for me that is really important is um, how how do you see the the like how effective was the communication of the message within the party and with the broader public, knowing that I mean I cannot even imagine the level of repression that that all of you were going through because I, it's now it's kind of hellish and I cannot think in the sixties you know having to work with the police and with the Cointel Pro and the CIA and all these like real imperialist machine. Uh, how, how effective it was the communication 
mission to deliver these messages because it seems so unified and so uh, uh, I feel like in a way centralized too, right? Like we know the, the 10 points program, we know about all of these messages and it's so clear. So what, was it something that was happening because all of you were tied in a, in a space? Uh, there was no internet as you mentioned. So how, how was that communication taking place and how important was all these uh, media uh, to communicate among yourselves? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll answer that question and then I'll ask another one before I was inspired by it. The, the first one is that uh, we had a uh, political education class where we came together. And we also had, and so we, you know, dealt with those issues. We had people who were, who could teach those classes who had that experience and that was insight. So that, that was, and then we had uh, deal with, uh, when we had issues that came up in the problem to evaluate those problems, we would come together and they, people would have to could have the constructive evaluation of the limitation of the problems, trying to overcome and bridge those differences. Because you had pastors who came in the party from different walks of life. Everybody wasn't on the same level of consciousness, nor had the same, some were hard, very hardcore, others were not, you know? So you had those dynamics that created problems. And when you see them, you had to resolve them. So you had to bring people together, nip those things in the bud and put policies in place. And so those things help internally at the same time, living in, as we evolved, we lived in collective spaces together. There was guidelines of what everybody had to do east and, and outside of the work that they had to do on a daily basis. When they came into that environment, if there were political education classes or discussions of what went on in that collective, they had to work, they had responsibility, or they had to take care of the kids, and the kids, or they had to wash the dishes, they had to do those, all these things that, that you do and chores and stuff were assigned. And, and if you came in at two o'clock at night, you still had to do your chores, you know, those kinds of things. You had security around it, area where people had to watch out to see what's going on, those kinds of things took place. So you had all, all those dynamics that went in to the cohesiveness, but you have to understand, and this was, uh, kind of the, anybody who wants to start a chapter in branches as we evolved had to come to the Bay Area, to the central headquarters and come out and stay for a week or two and observe and go out in the field, do everything that was being done here. And they would carry it back and they could set up the same structure. They had to send in reports on they, uh, weekly reports on what was going on. Then there was also the development of sending tapes recorded. There were tape recorded. So we would send tape messages back and forth and, and guidelines on, and then they would set it up. Some chapters could do more than others, those kinds of things, yeah. But I'll, at the same time, then we, you know, it didn't, um, you know, you had to call the Chapel, the county Chapel, where they tried to cause discredit and destroy the party. And they spent over $20 million or more on that issue. You got a, a, a police, you got an FBI agent named Swearinger who acknowledged that it was the FBI and that they had a unit within the FBI called Racial Matters. That you, the only way you could be a part of that unit is if you, you, you hated, didn't like black people, you see? So you had all that kind of dynamics. And, that, and, we have, and this, you have to understand, this was a youth movement. This 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years of age, that first cadre. So this was a youth movement that inspired youth across the country and the world. And they see, when you see you, they see themselves. When you see the frustrations that are going on in, in the world, you see. So it was, and, and, and you know, and the fact that we were changing, and it wasn't not necessarily the self-defense that they were concerned about. The fact was is that we were changing the minds of young people and people in the world. We, we, would, we, would put, we would point out the contradiction in relationship to those social programs, not as revisionist programs, but as an uh, example to show what the government should be doing that they weren't doing to support the community. And that there began to put a lot of pressure because people, the show brought more and more support in the context to who we were about and what we were doing, all those things. That's why you had the free breakfast lunch program in the schools because the community demanded that. You had those who just who may have did not agree with us, 
do some of the same thing because they're seeing the benefits of it. So you lead by example. A Vanguard organization leads by example. Then if it's correct, people will probably do some of the same thing. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of dynamics uh, in, in the context of the party itself. Uh, but in the context of the, uh, the artwork, it was a reflection of the 10 point platform of Black Panther Party, the quality of life issues. But it's also inspired by the political art that was being done during those days that I showed from Cuba. They used to do a lot of book artwork in solidarity with people struggling, third world people all over the world during that time. You got the books, go Oswald, you can go online, you might see them now. And it was that work, the work was then on uh, the Palestinian, Vietnam artwork, the anti war war movie here, and sometimes the solidarity, you see the work from Asia and, and El in China and, and what have you in Russia. You see that the solidarity works in with the African American people struggle. So all that, it was not, I was not trying to duplicate it, but it had an inspiration in the kind of way that I wanted to art and had meaning. Yeah, it spoke a language. Yeah. Something went on, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, I can. we can, thank you, Emery. Um, Thank you so much. I feel like we have time for maybe one more question. Andrew, you had a you had a question. Would you like to ask that verbally or shall I do it over the over the mic for you? Hey, are you talking to me? Yes. Um, Emery, great presentation. It's amazing to kind of get a, a firsthand account of um, you know, our shared American history. Black Panther movement, obviously one of the most misunderstood groups in this country because of the narrative that that basically dominated. Um, I, I just was struck by the, the consistency of, of you always utilizing text and images. I was just interested in how you see the relationship between the text and the image when you're making your, your artwork. How do they communicate with each other? How do they rely on each other? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first put, put it, uh, how art, it came about when I was doing art and I wanted to give a, a more, a more a, another layer of depth of meaning to the artwork. And, and, and getting the feeling from it in the context of what the art language should be. Uh, once when I did the illustration, sometime I would think about it and in the context of the knowledge and stuff around the issue and also listening to people in the community and what their concerns were and reading a lot of books that had uh, uh, were expressing uh, Concerns from just knowing a feeling. At first, I used to plagiarize sometimes, but then after a while, I developed my own language out of that. I just it just came that I knew it instinctively that this is how I should want, how I would say it. it would could do it. I wanted to do it. Okay, great, thank you. It was. It, I mean, it wasn't nothing fantastic about it for me. It was just, it was a deeper, there's deeper feeling. You know, after you, I'm always looking through books. We're looking through books and reading books on the, on the civil rights movement, what's going on in the South, a language that people talk, and you hear folks, you know, and, you, and then, you, you, then you pleasurize it. Then after a while, you begin to think about how, what this is saying, what this art is saying, and how you want to, how the text, how you want your text to, to, to be, you know. But Thank you, Emery. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to no, cut you okay. off. I could I could listen to this all day. I wish we could, um, but I think we have to wrap up um, at least for now. But I hope these conversations continue elsewhere, offline, among each other. And if we could give Emory another round of applause, I know it's it's strange to lecture on Zoom. And um, uh, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your work. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I was invited. And peace and love, everyone, and take care. Okay. Black Panthers forever. <laughs> okay.